Hi Year 12, uh, I'm sorry the video actually reached its maximum limit and I kept talking so I'm not quite sure where we got up to so I'm going to go backwards a little bit on stanza 1 to where we were up to um, so that this one can now continue. Um, so I had been talking about the gusty shower wraps, gusty being a strong wind um, or building up of emotion, also the idea of the burnt out with the leaves. Um, and then we were talking about the smoke itself and from the uh, the idea of the smoke from the chimney pots just uh, in here or um, the um, the we were also talking about the lonely cab horse steaming and stamping as well and what could that possibly mean so um, it was I was talking about the lonely cab horse steams and stamps is it cold is it keen to walk on is it impatient uh, you could li link that to um, proof of, um, oh sorry, uh, l later on in the poem um, it comes up again as well. And then that idea of assuming the world that we've talked about in class as well. Um, it's written in the simple present tense which indicates a repetitive movement as well as though we're sort of caught up in this cycle uh, and just keeps moving on. So we get this sense of inertia. Um, time is moving on and yet it's stagnant it's not moving anywhere at the same time then you have the question is the stamp itself could it mean print letters or something else postage um, again so we have that uh, polyvalence and that duality of meaning um, is it actually talking about the steam powered printing press as well uh, which you could get by using the lexical chains that come with the newspapers then you have the lighting of the lamps which is a ritual each night and so we get this uh, monotony of life happening again, all of a sudden thrown in, these routines, this mundanity of the modern world um, and the segregation of the natural world. Where's the moon? It's not in this one. It's, it's lamplight. It's an artificial light that is coming through. And so we get this sense in this stanza that we are condemning the modern urban life and the ignorance of the decaying city that comes through because their vision is obscured. They can't see it all. Then it moves on to stanza two. The morning comes to consciousness of faint smells of beer from the sawdust trampled street with all its muddy feet that press to early coffee stands. With the other masquerades that time resumes, one thinks of all the hands that are raising dingy shades in a thousand furnished rooms. So here um, we're, we've gone from the lighting of the lamps that closes off the first stanza to bring in the nocturnal darkness. Uh, could it be light pollution there? Is somehow day night blurred by allowing light to still happen at night? And then we actually skip the night. We go straight in. Before we were at the winter evening in the first answer, which is now jumped to the morning comes to consciousness. And so this idea of the change in time also coincides with the change in the persona's state of consciousness. Montgomery, one of the critics that we've read in class, argues that time serves as a mask for the entity of awareness of Eliot's poem. And we get that in jam there that explains the altered state of constant consciousness. The morning comes to consciousness of faint stale smells of beer from the sawdust trampled street with all its muddy feet that press to early coffee stands. It all flows together as one um, big sentence there because of the enjambment. So the smells of beer are like the smells of steak in the second line of the first stanza. So we have that movement or that, that smell continuing through. Notice structurally it's in the same place as well. Scientists have told us that familiar smells trigger memories and feelings. And if that's the case, how can we then link this to Rapsi on a windy night, which is all about memory as well? We also have this semantic opposition in smells of beer and coffee stands. The drinks have opposing effects on the human body. One is a pick-me-up. It's, it's uh, it gets you going. Um, we often drink it in the morning because it gets us going um, and makes us alert to our surroundings. The other um, makes us quite drowsy uh, and arguably shifts us into that sense of subconsciousness that belongs to the night. And notice it's a faint, stale smell of beer. 
Uh, it's it's off. It's rancid. It's like everything else. There seems to be a sense of decay to it as well. Then you also have the sawdust trampled street, and this lexical chain starts to come through with sawdust trampled street, sordid, soiled, grimy, dingy, blackened. It evokes this gloomy and dirty atmosphere. And also the sawdust, it could link us back to proof rock with the sawdust uh, covered floors of the restaurants with the oyster littered uh, floors. And also uh, with that, accompanying that, we get, get this with the other masquerades that time resumes and thinks of all the hands that are raising dingy shades in a thousand furnished rooms. The masquerades, some critics actually suggest that the sawdust and the masquerades go together, that there's a connotation of a circus which draws it to the noun of the masquerades. And if it's a circus, what kind of circus? Is it all just some kind of fantasy that's being watched and it's not real? It's kind of some bad dream, maybe. Uh, we also have these links to Proof Rock and back to the seedy end of town as well. And again, the feet that press. So again, we're at that fragmentation of individuals. We start to get a sense of anonymity of the city life. Faceless people hiding their real identity behind masks. It's like putting on the face to meet the faces of Proof Rock. We all have the trampled, again trampled, again comes back to feet. The fragment of city dwellers negating their individual identity. And aligns with the feet that press in the same direction to early coffee stands. And then we have this sense that... Um, this uniformity of this facelessness, this ordinariness, this dehumanization that is coming through. Also, there's the olfactory imagery that comes with the smells. We get this sense of it's a that when it's of faint stale smells of beer, it's a remnant from the night before. It's also a suggestion that something from the night before has happened, and it's perhaps triggering those memories or the emotions. The masquerades as well, hiding behind a mask, again, it's an obfuscation, it obscures identity and it gives that anonymity. We have the, all the hands of furnished rooms, all city dwellers, ray shades in uniform, automatic repetitive movement. It's this everything happening at once and it's like everybody is doing all the same thing. So all the rooms are uh, uniform together, all the hands doing the same thing. Again, it's a body part. Also, with that, that time resumes, one thinks of all the hands. It's like the thinking of time reminds us of the hands and is the hands of the clock going around as well as the hands that are raising the blinds, the shades. Are these the broken blinds from the night before? So we get this sense as well that somehow time took a break Somewhere between evening and morning, time took a break, but now it resumes and that uniformity begins again. This cycle begins again. And then the um, dingy shades it conjures this idea of dark and blurred colours that parallels with the thousand sordid images that come in the next stanza. Okay, I'm going to stop this one here before we go into stanza three. And um, so you can have a look at that and uh, bring in together what you've already seen in these two. But really think about the lack of visibility, the fragmentation, the mundanity of the day, the idea that it could also be about artistry and how that poetry challenges and the structure of the poem is challenging and what is it doing poetically there. And just what do you think is consciousness? Ask yourself that. What is consciousness? And we're going to stop it here and then we'll start again. <laughs>